you know, why why do we use direct action? We talked in the NVPA training a little bit earlier about where direct action happens, but um, you know, what 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 can direct action do for your campaign? You know, you're in your campaign and you're getting to this place where you want to start doing direct action, <coughs> soft blockades or hard blockades. What is it that direct action brings? Status quo. What? Status quo. The status quo. Um, I like to think of like direct action, like one thing that it could do is it could raise the morale of your own group, right? You can use direct action as a way to boost your own group on where they're at, to do something creative that both internally makes you guys feel better, but then also maybe inspires people to want to work with your organization. It's a, it's a way of using direct action and what it can do for your group. There's also um, escalation, right? You can use direct action to escalate um, your campaign. And escalation does not mean a more complicated direct action. For the next one, it doesn't mean a more aggressive direct action, necessarily, but it means that you're, uh, when we're not going to do the psychological warfare piece right now, but essentially means coming at them from different directions, and direct action is a, a way of amplifying your campaign and, and, putting, and creating more leverage, right? It's showing them you're willing to take risks. It's showing them that people are willing to go to get arrested over the issue. It, it, it's, a, it's an escalation tool. Um, it also, it's a punctuation tool. What do you think it means? If I say direct action helps punctuate something, what does that mean? Puts a statement on a campaign. Mm -hmm. It's a proper emphasis on something. Mm -hmm. It could be used like as maybe a mild post to be like, hey, 10 years yeah. ago, this, this oil spill happened. Right? Emphasis on something, bring, bring some focus back. Um, I like to talk, um, it could be used as like, um, and like one of my major reasons uh, for uh, supporting the direct action movement, I think the direct action is one of the strategies and tools we need to be using in our movement, is it's really good at taking the unseen thing and making it seen, mm -hmm. right? It takes the invisible thing that no one's acknowledging in our society and then we shine a spotlight on it. Um, and then the other tool, or alarm, right? It's the canary in the coal mine. So it takes the unseen scene, makes it seen, it's like an alarm. Um, the other aspect of that is also, the other thing that it does is it's reinforcement. If you're in negotiations with a corporation or a bank and you're telling them that you're serious or the issue's starting to, to like get watered down, the media's not covering you anymore, you can use direct action as like a way to reinforce the strength and conviction of your campaign to show that people are still motivated to do this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so you start talking about some soft blockade tools. We have two types. When we talk about blockades, we talk about soft or hard blockades. And all we're talking about with soft blockades versus hard blockades is whether or not you're using tools. If you're using tools for your blockade, then that's a harder blockade. Or hard, it's not harder, so we call them hard blockades. Soft blockades are using your body. Um, so what comes to mind when we think of a, block, a soft blockade? Arms locked, right? Arms locked, sitting down. How many people have been a part of a, like a sit-in? What are some tips and lessons learned from that? What worked, what didn't work? Oh. It's a numbers game. Like, uh, I mean, you can have, you know, a group of really determined people, but it, it comes down to how many points of entry you're trying to cover and how many people you have to cover them. I mean, you can be really, really determined and like, I'm not moving, but, you know, if there are only 20 of you and there are two points of entry, the police are getting, or whoever, are going to get through. At that point, you're making a symbolic statement, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing, too. But, that, yeah, it's, it's a, I think people don't think about it in terms of math often enough. I hear people come up with, like, let's shut down the Chase building. Like, 12 points of entry. <laughs> like, how many arrestables do you have? Yes. Good point. What else? What else has worked for people with uh, soft blockades, with linking arms? Videotaping it in order as just a form of insurance and self-protection, some documents, all physical and verbal encounters. Yes, all direct actions should have video cameras at them. Bring it. Yeah, super important. Did you have, were you raising your hand? Okay. Um, <coughs> so soft blockades like this can work out in the forest. You're just physically standing between the bulldozer and the worker and you're kind of like saying you have some high hopes that the person behind the vehicle uh, cares enough about not taking a human life or causing harm to a human that like that's a little bit the balance in the calculus that you put into your direct action plans you have to
situation like this, you're having, you're hoping or assuming that the person who's behind the wheel does not want to be responsible for taking a human life, right? Um, and sometimes it's a really effective tool. Now the other thing that happens, you stand up and you cross arms and you link, and you're okay, you're kind of solid, but the cops can move you pretty easily when you're standing. And so you could go from standing to sitting. Now how many people think that maybe going from standing to sitting while dealing with the cops would be a way to de-escalate the situation? Well that's good, because it's not. Um, when cops ask you to disperse and you're standing and linking arms and you go to sit down, it actually, um, it, it actually makes them, it's a hostile move to them. So it's good for the group, even though it's a reasonable tool and something that we need to use sometimes if you're doing a soft blockade. Often soft blockades come out of spontaneous actions, right? Maybe you are, um, you had a plan to do a more complicated blockade or you had a plan to just confront the CEO of the company when you were there that day or um, get on stage when the CEO was getting his award or the politician was getting their award that night and you got inspired to just like sit down and link arms and have a protest because you want to highlight the issue more or maybe it's a stall tactic because media hasn't gotten there yet. Depends. So that's sitting. Um, so you went through a training. So can I get, whoops, there's, then there's numbers. Can I get everyone to sit in a circle who's comfortable touching people? I'm going to just show some tools on how to make a soft blockade slightly more effective. You can all sit in a circle facing each other kind of close. This thing might have to get moved or folded up. <coughs> so, I'm not... No. Actually, you know what? Can I, I'm going to ask for no video yeah. footage of this one.